Uh, today we're having a, this evening we're having a public hearing. This is for our public transit. Uh, essentially, let me read the preamble, and we have a legal notice in the paper August 15th about this. The City of Athens is applying, as usual, for the Ohio Department of Transportation for Operating Capital Systems, a grant under 49 U.S.C. Section 5311 of the Federal Transit Laws. Uh, we are required to have a public hearing on this. Um, we'll be putting together what I distributed to you, everybody in council, of course, is an operating grant for the operating budget, capital budget, as well as other parts of it. Um, the operating grant will provide assist financial system for public transit service and the residents of Athens through the uh, calendar year of 2011. Service currently operates, operates Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Fares are 150 for one-way trip, elderly and disabled ride for 75%, 75 cents for one-way trip. Uh, children under six may ride free when accompanied by the adults. Um, Capital Grant also provides for purchase of uh, equipment as needed for the Athens Transit operations. The E&D, Elderly and Disabled Grant, will provide funds to state funds to offset the half fares. Again, if you look at your exhibit, you should have an exhibit saying um, operating budget, uh, exhibit F3. This is coming from our application. It looks at the uh, operating expenses we look, to, we, we look to see happen to us here. Uh, some of the differences, of course, is that we will probably, we will not be going for a bus. It should be in here someplace. Let's see. Capital. I'm looking for the capital right here. Um, that's capital and maintenance is going to be a little bit higher, 40000 And I think we're flush with buses right now. Um, at this point, I think the total amount we're going to be playing with for 2011 is... $521,290. Um, that's the total operating cost. And if you work all the way down, there's a various local subsidies, local revenue coming from Fairbox as well as uh, other parts of it. 11000 says for that. Local cash certifies, $107,000. Um, and again, this is pretty much pretty equivalent to what we did last year. We were pretty much flush with buses because we got one for the stimulus package last year, as well as we had one slated for 2009. And at that point, I guess we can take comments either from you guys or the public. Any comments from the public? Did everybody sign in who's here to the sign-up sheet? Looks like everybody did. Okay. Any comments from city council members? The other part of the public. We have talked many times about buses and the transportation system and um, that there is a net cost to the city, no matter how you cut it. And, and we do get a, a huge assistance from the state and the federal level, um, but it still does cost the city something. Mm -hmm. um, but I think all of us here and, and in the mayor's office believe that public transportation is, is worth the investment. Um, and our ridership shows that, that, that the citizens also um, agree that the buses are worth keeping on the streets. Uh, and I think it was last year, or late 2009, we increased the fares from $1 to 150 if you remember. Um, the 90-day passes went up a little bit, but it, not as much as the day-to-day -day fare. Um, this was us actually to offset the cost. I know there was concern on council about the fact that we were putting in more money each year to, to cover the buses. Um, I think any city that um, is a city eventually has to have some kind of public transit. Uh, I know there's always discussion about them curving, cutting back on some of this stuff. Um, this, of course, there's also the other section, the 50, I mentioned the... Uh, Section 5311, there's also 5311F, which covers, of course, the intercity <coughs> transit system. And as from everything I've heard, that's still on go, so we'll end up with a wrap going to Cincinnati soon. I think the kickoff we're talking about is maybe November 1st for that to happen. Last conversation I had with, uh, with some of the city people, uh, with the, the grant people. Um, other than that, I don't know. We still haven't gotten rid of the old buses that you abandoned, so to speak. We've, we've got the process to do on that still. I think we have a bid opening. We had a bid, uh, put out a bid for the Gillens, which are the ones from the University Courtyard that we used to have. 
the one with the broken engine, the broken transmission. And as far as I know, I think we got one person, but we haven't looked at it yet. I suspect it's not going to be a lot of money. Anything else? And there's always discussion about trying to improve it and get outside the city limits and double up the amount of transit, but the fact is that it costs more money to do that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll keep working on it. I think we'll probably eventually have to increase the advertising for the side, side buses uh, on the side, uh, but that's not ready to go yet. The, I don't the think. cost of everything? Yeah. Well, what happened when we went to new buses? They have a window in the back now, uh, the back door. They used to not have those, so they took away some of the advertising space. You don't want paper over that window. So maybe it's more of a premium. You, seriously, you can get those things that people can see through. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I'm a big one on trying to get as much view out of a bus as possible or any window in a, a moving vehicle. Anything else? Anybody? Anything else? Okay. Close okay. it down. We're going to close the public hearing. And uh, we will move right into a special session. Uh, we have some ordinances for third reading, several ordinances for second reading, um, and then we'll move into um, committees. We'll take a short adjournment and move into committees. Um, ordinances for, thir for third reading. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry. We need to establish a quorum. We have um, seven council members here out of seven. I'm a council member. Um, I will be voting, um, but I'm filling in for our president, um, Mr. Bias, who is out of town today. So I'll be acting president, but voting on, on these two questions that require votes. So for ordinances for third reading, ordinance 7810. An ordinance granting renewal of a revocable license to Ohio University for use of a portion of the city right-of-way on Riverside Drive for parking. Introduced by Council Member Fall. Uh, Mr. President, I move that we um, accept Ordinance 7810. Second. Second. Um, this is a um, renewal of a revocable license. Um, these are revocable license for 10 years. This is a pretty standard um, job of the development and and uh, committee and the renewal of the right of way queen as we said last time um, and this is for parking um, along Riverside Drive any questions or discussion about this um, ordinance all those in favor say aye aye, aye. those opposed same sign okay this is passed seven to zero uh, second ordinance for third reading ordinance 8010 an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to enter into contracts for, de not for design engineering of the Oxbow Bridge, Project 247, and declaring an emergency. Introduced by Councilmember Nisley. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for adoption of Ordinance 08010. Second. Okay. And this particular ordinance is for the preliminary engineering and the environmental clearance and right-of-way clearance for a project that will begin repairs on what we're referring to as the Oxbow Bridge or the old Richland Avenue Bridge over the Oxbow. Um, it's a bridge constructed in 1933 and it has been identified by the Ohio Department of Transportation as needing repair and it's part of our long-term plan for improvements to the bridges in the city. And so this will begin um, the preliminary work for it. Mayor? And uh, the actual construction is slated for 2012, so we're getting a head start on it to get all the designs and everything put together, right? Correct. Any questions from council members? Questions? Comments? Audience? All those in favor of Ordinance 8010, say signal so by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay. Again, this ordinance passes 7-0. We're going to move into ordinances for second reading. These ordinances normally will not require any action. Um, if if, um, if Member Poon has some action, we'll, when we get there, we'll ask for Okay. Um, ordinances for second reading. Ordinance 8110, an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Athens, Ohio, to enter into an agreement with the state of Ohio for renewal of an easement necessary for the sanitary relief sewer projects 17, 18, and 19 on land under the jurisdiction of Ohio University and declaring an emergency. 
Ordinance 8210, an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Athens, Ohio, to enter into an agreement with the state of Ohio for renewal of an easement for a water line and pump station on East State Street, property under the jurisdiction of Ohio University, and declaring an emergency. Ordinance 8310, an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Athens, Ohio, to enter into an agreement with the state of Ohio for an easement for a water line on Home Street under the jurisdiction of Ohio University and declaring an emergency. Ordinance 8410, an ordinance closing a portion of Court Street on Monday, October 25th, 2010, from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. for trick-or-treat hosted by the Athens Uptown Business Association. Ordinance 8510, an ordinance banning parking and closing that por portion of Court Street from Mulberry to Carpenter on October 30th and 31st, 2010, in anticipation of a large number of people converging on downtown Athens, Halloween weekend. Ordinance 8610, an ordinance establishing a blast-free drinking container zone on Court Street and adjoining sidewalks between Union and State on October 30th and 31st, 2010, Halloween weekend. Ordinance 8710, an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code, Chapter 11.04, vending, peddling, and soliciting to allow vending in a designated area on October 30 and 31, 2010, Halloween weekend. Ordinance 8810, an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code Section 13.04.10, unnecessary noise in the downtown area on October 30th and 31st, 2010, Halloween weekend. Ordinance 8910, an ordinance amending the 2010 Appropriation Ordinance. Member Kuhn. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to amend Ordinance 8910, Section 3, the um, Interfund Transfer, $5,614.57. It will go from uh, Route 56 SA Debt Fund 764 to the street rehab uh, 572. It was determined after much research that that was the appropriate place for those funds. So this is transferring money from one fund to another. To another. An interfund transfer which only city council can do. Um, any comments or questions from council members regarding this? Member Bain? Um, the last time we were I was talking about a long time ago when we had a water and sewer project out that way, and Auditor Heck did bring me a, um, some notes talking about storm sewer drainage improvements and so on on Kenny Drive. And so the initial um, item may have been, was probably okay. Uh, it was a 10 year uh, assessment. But um, last year we sent it into tr street rehab, so I think we'll you know, propose to continue with that. It was very complex. Mayor, did you have your hand up? No, she covered. Okay. Um, all those in favor of this amendment, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay, this um, ordinance has now been read for the first time, and we'll go back for second reading next week. Thank you. Ordinance 9010, an ordinance authorizing the auditor to reduce 2010, 2010 year-end appropriations. No comments. We will adjourn our special session. And we need a moment. Just move right on. And uh, go into committee meetings. Our first um, committee meeting is uh, community issues. And do we have an introduction for that? Remember? Yes. I could. Um, I'd like to uh, just take a moment to um, let the public know about Michael Wood Lewis, who is visiting us here from Burlington, Vermont. He's the co-founder of a project called the Front Porch Forum, who um, I shared some of this information with council members, with community neighborhood associations. And Michael's <coughs> taken the time to come to visit Athens um, and spent the day 
touring around the city neighborhoods, um, courtesy of Council Member Sands helping us uh, learn about the different neighborhoods in the area, and then also several other uh, locations in the county. And at lunchtime, uh, Michael then met with representatives from the neighborhood and community associations and several other communities surrounding um, Athens. Then this afternoon, uh, we met with students at Ohio University, uh, some representatives from the Student Senate, and then also uh, representatives from the off-campus living office, the community assistance. And, uh, talking with them about the project and getting some of their input and questions about it. So, um, and very basically, the, uh, the Front Porch Forum, uh, Michael has a, a brief presentation that we're working with on PowerPoint as we speak, getting it set up. But what this Front Porch Forum is, is an online neighborhood forum. It exists at this point in 25 Vermont towns and nearly 20,000 households. So it's something that uh, builds neighborhood communication and uh, is something that we're hopefully, uh, this is an exploratory visit on Michael's part to take a look at the Athens community and for us to learn more about this as a possible uh, pilot project. So without further delay, I'll let Michael take over then. Great. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm here from Burlington, Vermont, as, as Councillor nicely as said. Um, I'll just start at the beginning and I'll only take two or three hours of your time. Um, <laughs> Go to midnight. <laughs> um, now, a few, a quick overview and, then, and I'd love to field any questions. Um, my wife and I started a business in Burlington, Vermont. Um, uh, it's been four years ago now. And it's gotten a lot of traction locally and people use it quite a bit. And our purpose is to help nearby neighbors connect, communicate, build community, get involved locally. And it's, it's in fact achieved such a level of success, that is how people make use of it, um, has, been, has, has been really remarkable to the degree where we're getting some national recognition, um, some awards from different places, and we're looking for opportunities to expand to other communities. And so, Sometime next year, in 2011, we'll be in a position to grow outside of Vermont. We're, we're growing steadily in the state now. We're in about 40 towns. Um, and uh, by this time next year, we'll be looking beyond our state lines. And uh, the city of Athens has contacted us, a group of people. And so we're very interested in learning more. And that's what we've been doing today. And grateful for that opportunity. And. Um, you know, so it, it's, there's some significant similarities uh, uh, to our pilot area where we uh, have a town of a similar size in a, a region that has some, some uh, similar demographics. And we also have a major um, you know, university there at the University of Vermont. So very quickly, um, I have a, a, a non-city question for you. What do you do if you live rurally and your horses disappear? Well. Um, this question was answered in Huntington, Vermont, a rural town. This thing is uh, jumping on me. I'm not sure how to make this uh, PowerPoint behave itself. But uh, what they discovered was their horses spooked when there were some fireworks. And they were able to turn to, in this town, 90% of the neighbors, um, uh, is a town of about 2,000 people, subscribed to Front Porch Forum. And so they immediately went inside and said, help, our horses jumped the fence. And, and they're able to track the horses down. But what's really interesting is that about that is this first bullet, the safe return of the horses were critical, of course. But even more impressive was the, uh, the connections that were built. Because all these people in town had something to talk about. They had something to, to rally around. Um, people turned out and they went out and they talked to people they already knew and they talked to people, strangers that they hadn't met before at the school uh, playground, at the, uh, uh, the, the store where they all, were, the, the central store in town, etc. And in fact, uh, a month or so later, somebody asked the question when the horses were back safe and sound, well, why'd they jump in the first place? Why, you know, and they realized that this family didn't have quite the resources they needed to care for these horses, and so they pitched in, had a little old-fashioned barn raising, and, um, and helped the family. 
So if you can use your imagination here, I'm not sure why our, uh, this is really a compelling graph. Um, <laughs> But somewhere between this device and that device, the uh, color disappeared. Um, but what it shows, uh, again in my imagination, is that the, the problem the French Porch Forum is created to address is the phenomenon of increasing social isolation in our country. And there's a lot of different measures that scientists are reporting in um, to demonstrate that. One is there's an annual survey that goes out to ask people how many people do they have in their lives in whom they can confide. And the answer a few decades ago was 10%, and now, more recently, it's 25% of the population. So they have no one in which they can confide. Similar jump, the Census Bureau reports that 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 10% um, of the population lived it alone. Now, 25% of the population lives alone. You don't have to trust me on these numbers. They're really there. Um, from Harvard University, this research, some people may have heard of a book called Bowling Alone. It came out several years ago. Mm -hmm. It demonstrated that all sorts of civic engagement was decreasing. The number of people joining civic organizations like the Lions Club, for example, or, or, or what have you. The number of people attending or, or, or being involved with the PTA. Club meetings, I think overall they said it was down 67% over a 25 year period. Having friends over and family dinners down by 50%, 30%, something like that, in the different ways that these folks came up to measure things. So, what are the causes of that? Well, some people will point at the economy. There aren't as many stay at home moms as there used to be. Other people will point at suburban sprawl and the fact that we're in our cars all by ourselves more and more of the time, it seems like. Other people will say, well, it's not the, 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 the generation that went through the Depression together or went through World War II together. We don't have kind of that shared thing. Um, other people will point at digital media and say, well, we're all walking around with our heads stuck in, in the screen all the time. I don't know what the answer is, but I do think that you know, all the digital stuff, the broadband, is, is a, is a double-edged sword. And so what I think there's a good side there, and that is there's an opportunity to use the tools to enhance the things we want more of, which I'm arguing one of those things should be local civic engagement. So one thing that we do, again, I'm sorry this thing's jumping around so much, is that um, Front Porch Forum hosts a net networks of online neighborhood forums that blanket a whole area. So in our pilot area, we cover an area about twice the size of Athens County. Um, it's about 25, 30 towns. And um, it, we have about 33%, about a third of, of that area signed up and using our service. About 50% uses it in the city of Burlington proper. And as much as 90% uses it in several distinct neighborhoods or uh, small towns. And it's working in urban, suburban, and rural settings. It's working around campus as well. Not on campus, it's, it's not a fit for dormitories living, but off campus, uh, students use it quite a bit. Um, our mission, very straightforward, is to help nearby neighbors connect and, and to foster community. Um, here's a quick look. I don't know if that's visible from where you are of the city of Burlington on the left and in the greater metro area on the right. Each of the red boundaries delineates a neighborhood forum. The gray numbers, which are in the hundreds, uh, indicate how many subscribers are in each neighborhood. So you can see if you live in one neighborhood and you pick up and you move across town, you know, you'll be in a different neighborhood forum. So the people within each of those boundaries are talking to each other. And the map on the right, right, you can see the, you know, the city of Burlington is the dense area. And then as you go out in the rural areas, it gets less, uh, less dense. So people use the service to post about whatever people want to talk about with nearby neighbors. It's very simple stuff, um, but that's kind of the secret. It's not a big debate uh, right out of the blocks. It's it's not rocket science. It's not intimidating. It's not fighting. It's simply, hey, neighbors, I need a little help. I can't find my dog. I need to borrow a ladder. Uh, can someone recommend a plumber? Or it's an offer of, of someone's two cents about a local issue or you should really try.
This just opened up. I had a sandwich there, and it was great. We should all support him. Um, but, but the key is that all these postings are coming from clearly identified nearby neighbors. And by clearly identified, I mean that they automatically, the first and last name is included, the street the person lives on. And so by watching these postings go by over time, not only do people get direct, great direct results, they find the babysitter, um, you know, they recommend a, a, a mechanic, they, they commiserate with their neighbors because they both had their car broken into or whatever. But that second bullet, they start to feel more connected to their neighbors because they're watching this conversation go by two or three minutes a day. They're seeing these postings from people. Who is this John Doe on Maple Street? He was borrowing a canoe last month. This month is, he needs a, a dog, somebody to walk his dog. He's looking for a local kid to hire. And, and you know, eventually a collection, of, oh, that's the fella. And then when you see him on the street, you can meet and talk with him. Um, it's a great icebreaker. And ultimately, what we see is that people say that they get more involved in their local community when they have this opportunity to be plugged into the local um, goings on. And uh, uh, local college where we are took a survey, again, a mysterious uh, uh, missing data here, but um, two thirds of the survey respondents reported that they had attended a local event due to Front Porch Forum, like a city council meeting or a, or a uh, you know, an arts event or whatever. And nine out of 10 said that their civic engagement, their local involvement had increased. Just to wrap up, um, we have hundreds of examples of really compelling stories that, that come down through the service. You can see them on our website, frontporchforum.com. I like this first one. There was a blizzard that hit. It was a single mom with a teenage girl. And they had their um, main energy source went out, a fuel source, I think it was uh, propane. There was a problem with it. And so they went to the backup wood stove and they burned through their supply of wood in you know half a day. And there they were, they were stuck. They were snowed in, didn't know what to do. They put the word out on front porch forum and you know across the snow comes some neighbors with a snowmobile and you know a load of wood. And she didn't know these guys and they didn't know her, but they do now. And and best of all, she posted the results back to share with her in this neighborhood, in this ta small town, nine out of 10 people subscribed. So the whole town learned about this good deed. They all felt inspired. And what she said, she said, got the emergency load of firewood. That false but scary perception of isolation has been lifted. We feel a lot better and a lot warmer. And that's really uh, kind of says it all. I mentioned we've been getting some, some national recognition um, just helping get the word out. We work with public officials. We work with local businesses, uh, nonprofits. Many people volunteer in, to help raise awareness of the service in the, in the community. Uh, we built the technology ourselves. And finally, just a quick look at, at uh, the local area here, looking at population and number of households, quick estimate of, of you know, how the service might play out locally. Uh, in the county, it would be somewhere uh, 30 or so of our neighborhood forums, plus or minus a fair amount, depending on what the local feedback is and how we've set that up. So thank you for the opportunity to share that. Just a um, quick comment, Chris. Um, we um, we're on a, a tour of the area, and, and Michael mentioned that it was a tour of the county. The, the Athens Foundation um, sees the possibility of this throughout the county, which is what the last uh, the last graphic showed. We visited Nelsonville, uh, Gloucester, the Plains, um, and drove through lots of other areas. So, so it, it would not necessarily be just within the city of Athens if, as as pictured at this moment. However, as, as he said in the very beginning, he's just making some very preliminary visits to our area. So, uh, your thoughts? Um, you said that you started a company, and how is, do you charge, and how mm -hmm. is this a commercial operation? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're organized a for-profit, a mission-driven for-profit. And as I mentioned, our mission is to help neighbors connect and build community. The, um, 
in our pilot area, we have a small staff of four people. And we cover our expenses by selling ads to local businesses and by uh, uh, several other, that covers a little more than half of our revenue right there. And then um, a lot of other ideas to, to try to make it work out. And um, so far we're breaking even and we're doing okay. Um, in an ex when we're in an expansion mode, we look for a local partner who can cover our startup costs. Um, and so we are not um, far enough along yet in our planning to know what that would look like here. But that would be the nature of it. We would look for local partners who could help produce the funding to cover startup costs and then um, and, and be a local partner on the ground to help get the word out and get people on board and using this and, and reaping the benefits from it. And um, did, like, Burlington have neighborhood associations before you started? I mean, something in Athens, we have very strong neighborhood associations. Yeah. How do you see being able to coordinate and, um, or, I mean, what I see is potential conflict or you know, mm -hmm. competition? I had the um, good, good fortune of meeting with several folks from different neighborhood associations today. And, um, yeah, I, I don't see a conflict at all. Um, and yes, there are neighborhood associations at different stripes in Burlington. Um, some very active, some not. Some strictly, um, you know, business-oriented, kind of almost more homeowners association bylaw type things, and some much more about politics. And um, but what we do is, what Trumpet Forum has been able to do well in the areas we're in now, in the 40 towns we're in now, is attract and retain a crowd of people who are neighbors to engage in ongoing, you know, day after day after day, civil and constructive conversation. And typically it's about the simplest stuff, as we saw there, the lost pet, and uh, looking for a babysitter. But it means that when the time comes, when there's a tougher issue to grapple with, whether it's high stakes or, or, or modest stakes, you know, a new stop sign in the neighborhood or, or some, you know, there's a fire, home burned down and we need to rally around the family um, and help them out. Um, whatever the stakes, the, the, the crowd is gathered, the ice is broken, people are talking to each other, and there's an easy tool in place to communicate. And whether it's a, a pre-existing homeowners association or a neighborhood group or a city official or whoever takes advantage of that, that's wide open. Um, but it's, it's an opportunity for everybody to uh, easily connect. Number two. Um, is there a membership fee for the folks who participate? There's not. Our goal is to get everybody on board. And so we do everything we can and make it technologically very easy to get on board. Financially, you know, there's no cost. Uh, we don't want to give... You know, already we're saying you have to be able to use the internet essentially to participate. So, unfortunately, that means we're you know there's some people who aren't going to be able to participate directly. They can participate indirectly. We've had plenty of people, you know, help their elder parents or, or a neighbor who doesn't use the internet. You know, they'll print it out for them or they'll they'll tell them what's going on on it. Um, but so no, we don't charge people directly. We do accept contributions uh, from participants. We've had people who, you know, sell their house through Front Porch Forum. They're thrilled to have sa to, you know, saved realtor fee, and they'll contribute, you know, 50 bucks our way or whatever, and that happens enough that that's a significant part of our bottom line. Mayor? Um, a couple of things. You said you're out in the county. Um, the county does not have all broadband. What's the bandwidth that's required to run something like this? Is it... Yes, yeah, great question. It's, uh, again, designed to work in any situation um, at the minimal level. So we designed it to work four years ago on the dominant thing in Vermont, which was dial-up. Okay. And so it's working fine for people on dial-up. In fact, somebody compared it the other day to, um, they told me I should never say this, the a gateway drug to broadband. Because um, <laughs> people start out on our service using dial-up and pretty soon they want broadband and they want it bad because their neighbors who have broadband keep saying, hey, look at this video or check this out or do you know I can video Skype and see my grandchild uh, across the country? And 
what's that? You know, it's like, oh, you have dial-up. We have to get broadband. Well, they don't have it yet in our area. Oh, who doesn't have broadband yet? Let's get 20 people or 50 people and twist somebody's arm to try to get Comcast or whoever down, you know, down our road. And we see that happening all the time. Uh, other questions. Um, the the neighborhood areas. I know uh, I belong to the West Side Community Association, which actually overlaps about a block and a half with the North Side Neighborhood Association. And of course, you know, there's some people who are like one and the other on the same block and geographically. From what I've I've gone to your site you know, one time or another, um, I know you have very definitive uh, areas, and in theory, people who are outside that area can't really get into it. So I guess the question I'm asking is how you define the areas and is there a minimum or a maximum in terms of a neighborhood number? Yes. Drawing the neighborhood forum boundaries in our service is a big challenge. It's certainly a, one of the central challenges to setting up a service. Mm -hmm. And so we have guidelines that we use on number of, of, of households covered and political boundaries and different, different guidelines. And then we look for, to local expertise to help us set that up. Um, and even then, they're going to need adjustment over time. Um, we also you know, allow a, a buffer region. So if we have a line going down the middle of a city street between this neighborhood and that neighborhood, even if everyone agrees that that's a good place to put the line, still people who live on that street might want to be in both, and that's fine. And, and, and our software allows for that. And it's not so much to be exclusive. What we're trying to do is just get people in small groups, uh, the, the, relatively speaking, small groups. Um, you know, most of the stuff that happens on the internet uh, with social media, they're dealing with the world's population. So you get you know a million people to sign up for this service, that's fantastic, but they're doing it out of this huge mass of people. We're trying to get a critical mass of people out of 500 households here, and 300 households over here, and you know another 500 households over there, and each one has to have enough people on it to be active. And so um, it's a real challenge. But what we find is most people, um, are in our in our pilot area are willing and interested to sign up if they know it's going to be civil and constructive, if they know people are going to be identified and not just be spouting off anonymously, and if they know that it's going to feel more like a block party than writing a letter to the editor um, or, or, or speaking in front of the city council on camera. Uh, I see some smiles back there to the fact that we do have block parties here and um, they're not the type we really wonder. <laughs> Maybe I used the wrong metaphor. <laughs> Nothing to write home about. Actually, if you call it a fest, then we'd be more worried. Um, okay, and I, I, I seem to call in your literature, and I don't have it with me printed out. You had a certain amount of volunteer uh, Participation needed for volunteer moder moderating, was it, or something? Or? It's not the moderating. We okay. have our professional staff does the online community management, okay. um, which is a very light touch. It's more just screening out um, you know, the occasional person who, who goes overboard. Um, but the, uh, we do have a space and a need for community members who really like the idea and want to help make it succeed. And so we give them the option to, to self-designate as a front porch forum neighborhood volunteer and they can help be a booster and pass out flyers they can communicate with other neighborhood volunteers throughout the region okay. other comments okay um what mayor Wye was saying brought to mind um you have this distinct um neighborhoods but is there a way of communicating across neighborhoods in case there's um, citywide issues. We have um, town hall meetings that we would like many people to come to. Announcements, as opposed to getting right now. Right, we have the neighborhood associations announcing it. But is there a way of cross? You know, kind of. There are. There are in limited ways, and some of it works well, and some of it we're still evolving that model. Or um, emergency. Yes, you know. we have. Um, we grant access. <coughs> to multiple neighborhood forums to local public officials. So in Burlington, for example, there are 40 neighborhood forums in the city. The public works director has access to all of them, the police chief, the school superintendent. So like boil orders could go out. Right, <laughs> right. And so that ends up being highly appreciated by the citizens because they're hearing from their uh, public servants directly, um, not through the media or not um, you know, through, through, through some other channel, it's hard to, to, hard to, hard to uh, reach them through. Um, 
Now, it is a two-way medium. And so, you know, one must be careful what one puts out there uh, because you'll hear back. Um, and if that's what you're looking for, great. And if it's not, then you need to proceed with caution. But um, generally, people tend to be very engaged. Well, um, I just want to thank you for coming to visit with us and to also say, you know, this is an exploratory visit on Michael's part to come from Burlington to say, is this potentially a community? It's also an opportunity for us to get to know him and to say, is there potential here for, for the city and other communities in the Athens area to uh, talk further um, about exploring this? So. Thank you for the time. Thank you again. I really appreciate the opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on. Did, um, I'm sorry, Member Nisley, miscellaneous. I didn't have any other miscellaneous okay. items. Moving on to Safety Services Committee, Member Kuhn, security cameras. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the first thing on the Safety Committee agenda tonight is security cameras. And um, there was... Um, a safety assessment, is is that the correct way to put it, service safety director? That's, that's and, right. and as a result right. of that uh, safety assessment, it was determined that security cameras are needed in three locations. The first one would be the EPW building, which is 30 Curry and Drive, mm -hmm. and it would cost uh, $9,824. Uh, the second location is 387 West State Street, the service garage, and the cost of that camera would be $1,553. And the third location would be the community building slash skate park at a cost of $13,830. One of the things the auditor asked us to do, and they've done a review, and uh, now we've directed the department has to go back to see what they can already fund up what they already have appropriated. For example, the service garage, you know, what is that, like $1,500? So we'll be looking at that over the next uh, week before um, we come with the appropriations over the next, next week. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any comments? What was this? Why? What were they looking at specifically um, in the safety Appraisal. I mean, why is it that the um, skate park was specifically pointed out? Is this high graffiti or? The skate park are a number of reasons. It would serve not just the skate park, but also the community center area. As you know, there are, you know, there's green space. There's areas where it becomes dark and what have you. So they wanted to be able to look at that. It would be a PTZ, the point to zoom cameras that they would be able to have. That's why it's pricier, actually. Well, be but the thing is, is that many of the areas, like the community center, are dark at night. I mean, are they getting increased lighting at the same time? They, we have the lighting that's uh, available for the skate park during the summer, so there are people actually out there up till a certain hour who are able to. Um, but is there has there there been safety issues? I'm just. I, it strikes me as um, a concern to to spend thirteen thousand dollars to. Unless it's a safety issue. I mean, there are... Um, well, we'll, we'll also be coming to you um, actually in, in two weeks when we do our perfection presentation for the energy improvements. The community center review is a, a real valuable asset. Um, it also has the bus uh, ticket sales there. We have had, you know, it's a pretty public building. But is this only there. outside of the building? I can't recall if they have something that It's really different. From inside, and they have, they will serve both the community center and the rear recreational area. And do you see how it's different being outside 24 hours as opposed to inside? And I'd, I'd like more information, to tell you the truth, because I think that you know, having increased security cameras and, and thing, I think that um, security is important, and I think that the you know idea of identifying graffiti artists and such, but at the same time, I think that we have to be cautious. And, and $13,000 is a lot of money, so. I, again, we do have vandalism and graffiti that occurs. You, you've seen that on the uh, skate park itself. Um, that whole area, green area, is not really 
viewable from the from any player in the parking lot. And uh, the way we have the police right now, they would go through the parking lot. They would not go any further in on a, on a cursory visit. Um, I think this was a recommendation that's been put uh, was put forth a couple of years ago. It's part of the internal security. Um, the other ones, of course, are obvious because we would get theft. We had theft at the uh, uh, water public works uh, several years running. And the same thing, of course, with West State Street. Yeah, I think that I'm trying to separate, you know, I understand the, the garage and code buildings and those sort of things, but the, the public works buildings and such is different than a publicly occupied area. I just it's not occupied all the time. I mean, essentially, it shuts down at night, and, uh, and after that, it's up to whoever wants to be running around. We're going to be putting a good chunk of money in there. Inverters and uh, solar panels. I'll, I'll attempt to get your questions answered this way. Thank you. Mr. Cosby. I have similar concerns with, not, not specifically with these individual sites, but just in terms of the city um, installing public video cameras, um, surveillance cameras in public areas. Um, there's There are issues as to whether you know, what's going to happen to the video feed? Does this go into the rec department, into the police department? Um, is And we don't seem to have a policy in terms of where we put these. I think we should have had this discussion before the ones went in on Court Street. Um, we had a brief discussion after they went in. Um, but really, I think that's something that we need to develop as a city um, before we just continue to slowly install video cameras in public locations throughout the city. And are, will these be recorded? Are they public um, public records that people can um, request copies of? And I think there are related issues that I'd like some answers on. I, I can tell you, it's my knowledge is such that it wouldn't be tied into the APD system. This is strictly security and safety for the community center and the surrounding area. I sort of had the impression that it might be like the parking garage cameras. I mean, no one the garage are actually into tied the into the police department. I mean, so the, the I thing, so what you're saying Nobody watches it, do they? I mean, they don't look at it unless there's a problem. There's nobody actually viewing it all the time, is there? No, most of the time if something happens, they have to go back and look at it after the fact. Most of the time it just rewrites itself mm -hmm. over yeah. a certain period of time. And the idea there is that if somebody had, let's say, a damage or vandalism of a vehicle in a parking garage, then they could backtrack. They could go back and look at it and see and I don't know what that time frame is, but it's, it's it depends on capacity and how many cameras you have because it's a it's a memory issue at that point. And just so you know, this came out of our safety, our city safety committee that are made up of representatives of different um, departments and divisions that come together, and that this this became their recommendation. So, but with the the community, I'd like to just make sure the community center would only be. If it's not going to the APD, it would only be looked at while the community center's center lobby is open. Well, I don't want to give a, a false indication that if something were to occur and, and it is recorded, absolutely, investigators would go down there and, and be looking at it. You know, it would be another so that implies center. that there's going to be recording. I think that I, I agree with um, Member Gosney is that we don't have a you know, a policy right now about how long it's recorded, whether it's public access, people can request public records on it. I think that those sort of issues, if we're going to install that many more cameras, we need to start looking at these issues. I know I sat through one meeting, I think it was Captain Pyle on this, uh, about whether it's public record or not. And, and I think the, the point of view he was using is that we, it's, it does record it, but it really we're not looking at it. Uh, it's, it's basically a, uh, a, a tape loop, so to speak. And the only time we'd actually turn it into public record if there was an incident. Then at that point, we would download that particular frame, so those frames that right. we need. But I think we need a policy that says, to, to, to state what Captain Pyle says. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to record that so that if somebody says, I want to know who's using the skate park at midnight, you know, we want to know because... The lights off at midnight. Before midnight. Does that stop some people? <laughs> they could be no, using no. flashlights, you know. Oh, yeah. um, who's using flashlights on the skate park? I mean, I think that it's it's a legitimate issue to, especially because skate park, you're dealing with minors. And any of those recreational areas, you are dealing with minors. And so that's you, a problem for public 
areas? Um, I think that there might be some issues about public um, screening and, and stuff. I mean, those are recreation areas. I think that that's just, a, I think we need to look at policy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. President Sands, did you have something to? No, I was just going to suggest that the, the mayor suggested that Captain Pyle had um, voiced some uh, procedure and maybe we ought, if we could hear from him. Well, we'll see what he, uh, again, I think it was a philosophical discussion, me asking about the same questions. When, uh, in terms of public records, when do they, when does a trip into a public record? Yeah. And, um, you know, the fact is that most of the time nobody's looking at it, there's not a human eye on it. Probably there, there probably there is already some state or municipal we can look policy yes. that well, uh, is in effect. There, there is very much different policy for juveniles than there are for for adults, too. Well, walking down the street. Well, the, I think that when you, yes. yes, when you have, um, Court Street is, is different because you're dealing with a broad general public, but when you're dealing with a recreational um, facility that majority of the people you know is under 18, I think that you need to, to think about, I, th I would like to see policy on that. Well, I, w I just would say that I think that the community serves, the community center in the area around it, surrounds it actually serves all populations of the city. So, but we'll, we'll, well, I mean, it sounds like though you're questions. putting cameras right on the, the skate park with it, what how it, Sherry defined it and and such. It would encompass that area, which is an area that's been, you know, we've had some issues with. So. Right. But, but it's issues that area, have to do with Mike Stanley juniors. Park area has been vandalized. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's in the view. Um, the bike path is in the view. That there's all ages going along the bike path. Um, you know, I don't think when we say skate park, that's at the bicentennial park. That whole oh. arc right there. You know, if somebody starts shredding that, we'd like to know about it on film. We're putting trees there right now. Fortunately, they're not trees that most people would tear up. They're not in the right location for doing that. Right, but I think that when you start talking about the different areas. I just, I get concerned when people start um, identifying, you know, you're not talking about the basketball area. You're talking... The basketball I mean, area is there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it wasn't that. discussed to the, specifically. Actually, to, to shoot the um, skate park, you have to go right yes. through well, the okay. fire side so of the basketball you'll, area. You'll come back to mm -hmm. it. We will. Got Thank it. you. Yes. Um, Member Coon. Fire ladder trucks, yes. what you can do with this. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we've, we've mm -hmm. talked about this before, and... Um, several times as a matter of fact and and we know that the fire department's ladder truck needs to be replaced it's over 20 years old they've already replaced the engine um, so we need to decide and we've been trying to save money toward that and um, as a little side note we did receive um, twenty six thousand seven hundred and seventy eight dollars this year from the ohio board of regents uh, for police and fire expenses in a college town impacted funds. So that was a good thing. Um, but we need, we need to decide when we're, it takes a year to have it made. And so we need to decide when we want to order it and how we want to pay for it. We have options. We've talked about the lease purchase before which has some really attractive features and it's very flexible uh, regarding repayment and how many years you would like to pay and that sort of thing. Um, you can do 100% financing, no down payment. It sounds very attractive. However, um, I personally would sort of lean toward borrowing the money and just purchasing the truck. We could probably get a much lower interest rate. We've been pretty lucky in that department. Uh, there, if we had a backup ladder truck, there's a third option. We could send the truck back to the factory and have it totally refurbished, and that would save a lot of money. But we don't have two ladder trucks. We just have one. So that's really, we can't do that. That would be nice. And so um, what are your thoughts on when to order it? Can you tell us how much money we have put away and how much the ladder truck is going to cost? Um, I did verify with the chief this morning what he thought the um, ladder truck 
would cost and he because in the past I had heard um, from 1.1 million to 1.5 and he said this morning that he thought it was closer to 1.1 1 .1 mm -hmm. that's what he's been into the million and so according to the auditor I believe it's four hundred and forty thousand dollars that we've reserved we haven't reserved towards that purchase so we're looking at two-thirds go through five hundred five hundred and sixty over five hundred thousand yeah. which is chunk of change but mm -hmm. so well when you talk to the chief about cost did he express a um, preference for how we go about it he, he really he really didn't I I think he's just eager to to get it. He really didn't. I I don't think he's expressed a preference. And he, and he shouldn't. You actually hold the purse strings and get to say how um, these things are going to be. We try. Um, <clears throat> never got anything. I know at, at, along the, the past couple of years here, there have been a couple of looks at grants to try to help pay for this. I guess that hasn't um, done There's anything. one in, in yeah. the train right now. I know he applied sometime about August, was it? Mid-August or uh, A little July? earlier than that, but we may not hear until really close to the end of the year. But yes, there is a grant out there. And some some trucks, some equipment had been funded through that, and we looked at the past year. Yeah. yeah. We're hopeful. We did not get the fire, the safer for the right. firefighters. But, but, you know, and I know we're heading into budget time, and I think that's why this discussion is coming up as we look at 2011. You know, how are we going to fund the replacement fire truck? Member B. Um, where did we get the 40,000? I remember the 400, but where'd the 40,000 come from? I'm not sure. That was okay. appropriated in the budget last year. Oh, okay. Um, I suspect, although it doesn't quite jive with the numbers I have in my mind, that when we move some of the money out of tourism, we we'll okay. some in general right. and some in. To All right. So as, as a fiscal conservative, I would like to, you know, we've got a, lot, a little bit of time, maybe start mm -hmm. thinking about it in November, but I'd like to see the payroll results from OU by, by the end of June. Of, um, when will we know? By the end of October? So we, I mean, if we're in dire straits, I think the truck is only 12 years old. I don't think it's any 20. Is it? You think it's 20? If it were 20, we would be in much. I thought that was his replacement schedule. Yeah, that's it. Maybe the engine. I, that's what I. That was my impression. Okay. But the rebuild engine may not be. Mm -hmm. I don't Gave know when they life. did that. Hmm. No. But. I mean, it'd be better not to be driving. And when you get to ice. safety standards and what have you, what they've brought down and what we've. We tested um, I know, there's significant differences. Yeah. And it does have to like pass, I, I believe it does have to pass a test every year. And it has. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it has. Um, so. And we'll know, I mean, we'll be, we could theoretically have it by fall of the next year, October, if the money's there. I mean, it's. It's, I thought it was two years, too. Well, no, that was, we used to buy them on a two-year cycle. I just... This is a, yeah. this is a bigger truck. A bigger truck we buy, and this one, we have squirreled away the money. Maybe, do you think there's going to be a need to squirrel away this year? That's the question. What do you think, Kathy? You don't think so? It's going to be tight, yeah. So we'll wait and see a little bit, just to see. Because I know that, well, there's not much money in a group two, a group threes and fours at OU. I just, I don't know. I think we're going to, maybe, maybe we won't be surprised. Who knows? October revenue, you know, estimates. And then we'll a month know. from now. A month from now. Planning Can you to handle that? that? Okay. That way I'll we'll revisit less it. Less Revisit it in a month then. Yeah. Okay. Bake sale. Yeah. <laughs> what else? What else Why can not? I do, Sherry? <laughs> Car wash. Yeah, Car wash. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, we'll revisit this in a month. Okay. Um, Member Coon, and Ms. Blaney? Yes, I do. I have one other. Two, actually. Two? I'll give you two. Okay. <laughs> um, the one that I know about <laughs> is uh, also involves the fire department in um, it involves the ramp for Fire Station 2, which is okay. Richland Avenue. Paula, is that the, the front or the... It is. It's mm -hmm. the front. That we visited on the tour. 
Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's what I was thinking. So um, we really need to get that taken care of uh, this fall, and so we would need to appropriate seven thousand two hundred dollars for that. Did you need to add anything? We did. Um, this summer, um, as we switched over to our new phone system and what have you, we um, our, some of our outdoor paging has failed at critical facilities. The total of this is just under 21,500, 21, but it is uh, zone paging and outdoor paging for fire, both fire stations, one and two, the service garage, and both plants. And um, are these all replacements? Mm -hmm. And uh, they need upgraded. They're, they're not supported. They're, some of them are kind of broken, crackly. Nothing worse than having your firefighters maybe down here and not hearing, you know, the call. Same thing in our plants. It's critical. And the wastewater treatment plant is so large, you know. I think theirs is probably the highest cost, $6,000. Is it in the station? I mean, it's only at the station, right? The paging? It's, these go outdoor. It's I know, not at the station. That, at the station, they don't go on the trucks, do they? Oh. Correct. I'm okay, sorry. so it's simply the lot that the fire station sits on is where the paging happens, right? Internal building and outside. But there's a short tail wire in so that the phone system works with this paging system. So. From black box and, and I what about those? <laughs> well, I objected because it's in a neighborhood, and I was worried about the the Fire noise homes. factor. Outside homes. Mm -hmm. Because there is a substantial outside noise factor. The marine one. horns, I believe, is. What yeah, I believe the marine horns were yeah. it, and I just, you know, she has her touch point about the skate park. Mine was marine <laughs> horns of neighborhoods. Um, are we replacing an old system that's faulty, or is this new stuff that's not old working? System. It's the old system, and it's not tagged into our new system. Every At a minimum, if you want some further review, I would request that we can proceed with the plants while we work on getting answers to um, the marine horns in the residential areas. Go ahead with the plants. Okay. I would just argue that safety is precedence, and, and, and we should make sure that they're well equipped. That, that would be my support or my voice. I think that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how loud will it be? I mean, don't paint me into the corner of not being in favor of safety. No, I'm not. I wasn't. Okay. That wasn't my. All right. I, I, was just, sure. I was just supporting and acknowledging that I think we need to. Next week, we'll have an ordinance. Talk. Well, on the plants. If I can get the, if on the plants, and if I can get the answers that can satisfy council in advance. Okay. Well, just on the plants would be okay if it's only vocal. But even so, you know, if you talk to people in the East End, they'll talk about how the noise goes up that street if it's all and it's 24-hour operation. We, we've already had these paging systems. No, I know. They're just not. Operating. I know. I'm just telling you that I've heard complaints okay. about them. People complain about lots of things. I agree. That's true. Auditor, can I ask how much those are going to be? I think we just got to that. Um, they're broken out by 21 five. 21 five total? Yes. But some are that come through different funds, some general fund, and then the others that different. So the new systems aren't going to be any louder. They're just, just replacing I would the old not, system that's I'll faulty. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. Okay. Um, Ron Forrest, our IT uh, person, did the research and provided these quotes. He actually offered to be here tonight. I told him it wasn't necessary. So, <laughs> well, because it's similar to what Member Bain is sharing. I have heard some concerns on the west side from um, people who live in close proximity to the the city buildings that there's a lot of noise from the buildings, the trucks backing up. It, it's it can be problematic if you're living close by. And if we do have breaks in the middle of the night, which we do, yeah. yes, they're going in and out of there with their lights, and the radios are on, so that they can keep the backup beavers are going. Yes. That's the all I have. Carol's living in the city. Okay. Member Fall, planning and development. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Sams. Um, the first uh, order of business I have is an amendment um, to the appeal process for the taxi cab, and basically what this is is removing. Um, it's amending the ordinance, um, Chapter 11.08, um, which is looking at um, 
when an applicant has been denied a license, and this is the appeal and review process. Um, and basically, the council is involved in it now, um, and they, the um, re the um, changes amending to the ordinance would make it a taxi board would be um, in charge of looking at the review, the appeal, um, and then it changes some timing and notification requirements um, from uh, weeks, from a week to a month, um, and um, making it more transparent um, for um, the whole process. Um, I assume that the taxi board will be appointed by the mayor. Or is this a council appointed? I think the taxi board exists already. It does. The taxi board is, so this is just changing and putting <coughs> the appeal process upon the taxi board, which makes sense. Board council doesn't really necessarily else. need to be re involved in the appeal process for licenses. This is probably one of the only times we're involved with the review process. So this would follow precedence for all the other review processes that we have. And the Zoning Board of Appeals and those sort of things. So that's what that one. Any questions? I have the words, the verbiage here. Which we can put in your box. Is that from? It's from a state change in state law that requires this now. No, this was put forward by the. Hmm? This was put forward by the mayor. Right? Oh, but I, you know, taxi board. Mm -hmm. Taxi board. Tax board. Okay. Sometimes changes come from all the way no. Mexico. Okay. Um. Oh, we have a revocable license. Um, this one is for the Southeast Beverage Company, which is for a sign. This is another 10-year license that um, we do. Um, this process, uh, the um, permit has been put in, put in, and everything has been signed off for this revocable license. Pretty straightforward. License is already the sign is already there, so it's a renewal. This is they're changing the sign. This is Curtis mm -hmm. Dripping. It's the yeah. previous Previously. It's verbiage. Okay. okay. Um, any questions on revocable licenses? Which we'd love to do. Um, Your favorite thing. My favorite thing. <laughs> Old Peach Ridge. We have looked at Old Peach Ridge um, annexation before. Um, and the annexation uh, request had to be in the office for 60 days for public review and uh, comment. Did we have any comments? No, no comments. Um, the zoning board had also looked at the um, zoning of that and they planning voted. Commission. <coughs> planning Commission, sorry. Zoning Commission. Planning Commission voted 4 0 to recommend that the City Council um, be zoned R1 in accordance with the surrounding area. So that has been put forward. So um, not only will we have the continuation of the annexation <coughs> process, but a zoning um, a ordinance will also be put in with this request. We've talked about this several times in council. And I have nothing for miscellaneous. That's a big lie. Um, no. One miscellaneous, just to bring up for interest sake, um, the um, the planning, Regional Planning Commission, Athens County Regional Planning Commission, is going to be having a, uh, actually it's a board of, uh, the commissioners, Athens County Commissioners, they're having a final public hearing September 21st, 7 p.m. Uh, for adopting the proposed Athens, comprehensive, Athens County Comprehensive Plan. This will be at the uh, co Athens County Cooperative Extension Office on 280 West Union Street. I say it's the 21st of this month. That would be next week sometime and at 7 p.m. Uh, I believe there's a website for that if you haven't been there already. And I just mentioned because this it's in its final uh, throws, I guess, or whatever plan. They've been working on this for a couple of years now. Yes, and they did it much cheaper than ours. Zoning. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> Any other miscellaneous? Moving on to finance and personnel <clears throat> committee. That's. Um, my committee, and I don't know a whole lot about any of these. Uh, vehicle disposal. Okay. Who has vehicles to dispose? Okay, Mr. Bain. Um, I, I asked if I couldn't pass this off to Chris, but I was told that last time it's a finance and personnel committee. The police department has two court order 
items that have been put on the books, and we would like to dispose of them in the usual fashion of judicial ordinance. And I have the numbers right here for Debbie mm -hmm. to make that ordinance if there are no problems. Chris feels comfy doing it, she even could. But it will come out of the Finance and Personnel Committee, apparently. Next. Okay. Moving on to CMI utility billing software. Um, okay. I, I have, I have um, several papers on it. A breakdown on, on it to give to Debbie to cause um, this to happen. 21000 from the water fund, 21000 from the sewer fund, 12000 from the garbage fund, and uh, 6000 from the parking garage. And that would be for a total of, of roughly $60,000 for the CMI. And we'll have it up for reading with an emergency clause unless there's an objection. Last time we bought software, and um, you can read the post about Blackboard and basically understand my attitude toward most software packages. <laughs> but anyway, having said that, this one is supposed to be fabulous and wonderful and it'll work perfectly and will be, at least it'll be supported. And I think if that's what we need, this is what we'll have. $60,000 from those funds. Last time we just charged every user $12, which probably this is more fair and equitable. Okay, any problems on that? In the total amount? New software, you can't, you gotta love it. Here you go, What's the, um, Utility okay. spilling software, right? You said it would be supported. Um, what's the contract length? Um, well, I'll have to ask Kathy. It's also a support, oh, the auditor's office uses their software, and we've had good luck. It's sort of son of NCR, that's what I call it. You know, it's been around for a good long time. It isn't really, but it's dating. Right. It, it has, and um, we're pretty happy with our software system. The other advantage to this um, moving to CMI is that it will interface with our system. Now, um, the mayor's office, the sort of safety director, has to. Um, do a, a spreadsheet, send it to our office, and then um, all the uh, charges are manually inputted into our system. And there's a lot of little ones. You'd be surprised how many <laughs> things come through on there. And um, so the maintenance contracts we sign for a year at a time. And it's whatever level you want. If you want 24-7 service or, you know, it, it's uh, we always look at ours and decide what we really need as uh, far as our had, backup. How long have you had your... Before I started, um, when I we changed, um, the auditor's office upgraded their software in 2005, after I started in 2004, because it was um, our server, they weren't, they weren't, there was no uh, warning on our server anymore, it was about eight years old, and um, I think our software goes back into, well into the 90s. It does. <coughs> when they used to have a Pine interface. Uh, <laughs> well, since we're talking IT, oh, Allahu. Uh, last time we discussed this several months ago, we um, yeah. brought up online payments. Away. Is that something that's going to be in implemented with this new system? Not at the beginning. We need to get this up and going. Um, and um, well, Our system now is fairly crippled in terms of how we do it. And we you know, have one man that's like a phone call of many hours away and what have you, but that's not supported the way. So that is something that I, I understand you still would like us to look into and have, but we'd like to get this going. I believe the price was quite high, wasn't quite it? Quite high. Quite high. It just so high specific. that I just said, oh, I guess I'll skip that. And, and we'd be charged a certain dollar amount if we didn't meet a minimum number Jeez. of users and payments per month. So that was, that was kind of shocking. Mm. Well, since we're talking IT, um, there's a proposal I have in front of me to fund a half-year part-time assistant for Ron Forrest, who not only does the software, but also now has the phone system, which is new and improved, but apparently they're, you know, they're all numbers of tentacles going out that he has to do. I mean, I always think of the Saturday Night Live episode with the IT guy, you know, the, so everybody jumping up and saying, like, help me, help me. And having, you know, you can see how, how horrible it must be to have be the only person there. And I know Ron has worked pretty tirelessly on this and the phones and the software. So we're talking about, and this is an act of faith next year at least, um, perhaps earlier. There is money in internal service, which is transferred from all the funds for this benefit um, between 10 and $15 an hour, up to 20 hours a week. Any ideas on that? You want to think about it for a while? 
Do we need an intern? Um, I don't know. The reason we want to have a range, and I'm being told even the range starts low, is because you really want someone with some knowledge and some expertise. If we have, we all love interns, but you have to spend a lot of time with interns sometimes. And this is supposed to be someone who can be an additional arm, as she indicated, for the octopus um, to be able to. The technology octopus. <laughs> So, I don't and I don't know that we had defined the hours to that level. I thought part-time could go up to 30 hours, but it was really looking 20, at 2011 budget and what we can support. Tw I think 20 or else we're going to have to start talking benefits, don't you? Yes. I mean, I cannot imagine. Okay. Maybe, could you explore with Ron the intern question? See if the, I mean, it's at least explore. I mean, a small I little foray. <laughs> and I have. Um, I mean, yeah, I, we've, we've, we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. And he rejected it? He really needs someone with some knowledge. And that way, if you have the range, even, I mean, told you're not going to get someone with that kind of knowledge at $10 an hour, but maybe 12 or 15 um, he could find someone that has, uh, could hit the ground running, as it were, Correct. at least with the computerized systems, and then he can bring him in on the phone system. OK. And so now we'll ask Kathy which, to weigh in on this. But the other thing is that um, he might be getting someone from hockey. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, just because that kind of practical application is often a hockey. He's taught classes up there. Does he? Still yeah, teach? that's yeah. That's why I wondered if. The only thing I was going to say about the interns is they kind of come and go, yeah. and there's that learning curve every year or every quarter or semester whenever they start. Mm -hmm. um, and we have about four part-time people with the city that are, are steady and have been here a long time. Mm -hmm. There's certainly an advantage to having that. Mm -hmm. And there's and we have the advantage versus they really, sh you know, at a certain point benefits. Sure. And I, you know, I'm thinking that so. Question, well, I feel fiscally conservative, too, on mm -hmm. the one hand, and so I'm concerned about the expense to the city. On the other hand, the intern question, I, I, I would think we need someone who's here, who's trained, who's going to be here, who doesn't, you know, so we wouldn't be going through the retraining period, you know, periodically, because then you lose time, and, and then you're trying to catch up. So. Yeah, we all are fiscal conservatives because uh, we've done pretty well with the changes. But we'll be um, changing, incidentally, the last page of the personnel ordinance. And um, there was a some there were some some decisions made in the summer on hiring that um, were out of sync with the last page of the personnel ordinance, which lists all the part-time people. Mm -hmm. And we had once had in the personnel ordinance. Minimum wage plus two dollars as the range for part-time employment, and so we changed on one page, but apparently I don't know if we changed on the other. Um, jobs were done, and some of them start higher than that. Like the pool manager is probably not a minimum wage job, I don't think. Head lifeguard probably not, and so um, we're going to finish up this year by making that correction, if it's okay with you. Um, I don't have the hard and fast numbers. Let's just say generally minimum wage plus two dollars would be the range, and it's depend. We don't put the staffing in. We don't say you get to have three of those part-time people. It's dependent on what's in their budget. So we control it. I mean, as much as we control anything like this, we control it at the outset. So if you want to go over that again, I'm, I, I'll be happy to bring it next time so you can see it and we can we can pursue it. Yeah. We're going to clear up some. Uh, we had titles in there that are not correct. Right, that's what we decided minutes. to we'll do. Remove those. We have daycare instructors, uh, or child slash daycare instructors that have worked for us for three years. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so we want to be able to say, oh, you're not stuck at 7:30. You know, mm -hmm. when they've been vetted, they've had to go through the background check. And so mm -hmm. we'd like to have this opportunity to, to and to and we had some issues. Um, you know, with some of the summer help in terms of um, our accounting, in terms of the numbers, so we need to make sure. That we yeah, well, there's a slip up here and there, so we're going to oh. get it sorted out. We want to do that this soon. Yes. Right away. Absolutely. Soonly. It's got to be next, next yes. week. Because we paid more than we had in the line. Okay. Part of the issue there is that the this part of the ordinance in terms of staffing and staffing <coughs> levels it actually gives you one number, it does not give you a range of pay. It's been set at this dollar amount. 
and uh, year in and year out. And we never so changed it. We never changed it. Nobody asked us to. We, well, we never, it never occurred to us, I guess. You know. Okay. Um, so ask and we'll give, maybe. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, continue, okay. Um, Member Bain, you're moving right along. You have one more. Don't one you? more. Um, I was going to ask um, if Kathy could look up the cost of borrowing six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars potentially for that fire truck, in the, as we're waiting for the uh, maybe yeah. over a ten or uh, fifteen-year period, with the idea that we could some year not not pay much of anything, you know, like we've done before, yeah. and see how that comes through, so we'd be ready to roll. Okay. And you're, Taking some of that money for something else? No, <laughs> just fire truck. Well, it's one point. Sorry. Yeah, but we've subtracted yeah, our 440. Yeah. I, right. I, I, I Every forgot time you say fire one. truck, that kid's song about the fire truck runs through my head. <laughs> okay. All right, next question. Next thing on my agenda, although it's not the week, yeah, before I go to Paula, um, this is finance, broadly written. Uh, it will be um, next time, if it's okay with you, Finance I'm going to put the generation fee on again. We'll see if it's better the second time around with the multi-county district. And um, maybe we'll even suspend the rules and just say, okay, we're ready, because this is do or die time. Okay? Remember how it didn't pass? Logan didn't vote for it? I don't think we'll have the, maybe we won't have the um, paperwork to do it on time, but I just wanted you to know that we were stalwart past it, and now we... Nancy, um, yeah. I was at the Solid Waste meeting this morning. Um, uh -huh. I did not get the letter, but Roger will give us the official letter and wording for the generation. Okay, uh, the so we'll just go ahead and have it up for first reading. I'll get time. it to you before next week. We had it to Debbie. She'll take care okay. of it. The oh. other, other thing that we've been talking about in the Finance Committee is we would like to have a... Pretend, we're asking the auditor to check on about a 1% salary increase with some changes in insurance, and we'll be talking with you later on that. Okay. We're just starting down the path. We want to make sure everybody understands that's our, our goal. That's for the non-union. For the non-union only. That's all we can do. Now, what were you going to ask for, Paula? More money? Not me, Kathy. I have one Kathy. minor oh. thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not asking for money. Uh, no, this is a bookkeeping thing, a yearly uh, resolution accepting the amounts and rates from the county auditor's office and the budget commission. Um, it's a resolution, three reading. However, I just got it the day after our meeting last <laughs> week, which means um, it, we'll need to suspend next week and pass it. And everybody it's October 1st. Um, we... Hardly ever. I think only one time since I've been here have we had three full readings. But um, you know, if we want to collect our, our in, in oh, side share. millage, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have to complete the paperwork for the. You county. don't do it. Somebody else gets it. Mm -hmm. Well, goodness, we it just seems do. like last week we did. I know. Seven <laughs> <laughs> plus from the county. That's for me. Yeah. They collect the property taxes in the city, and that's how we we get our, our how share much? of taxes. Fifty thousand about. No, five hundred. Oh, it's like five hundred thousand. Yeah. Five hundred thousand. Five sixty somewhere around there. Okay, that's yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Had a missed a zero in there. Okay. Um, <laughs> nothing else for finance and personnel. That's good. all. No. Um, Member Dawson, do you have anything for? Um, what I was going to cover tonight is actually going to be covered in two weeks. Um, it's, it will be a report. Um, a few months, uh, several months ago, the city hired a group to um, put a plan together for comprehensive uh, energy efficiency retrofits on city buildings. And so that's what this is, if anyone wants to take a look at it, um, before our meeting two weeks from now. From the perfection, um, so perfection, from perfection group. group. And perfection group. so we'll be hearing from them um, the end, near the end of this month. Yeah. Actually, I had a note that I wrote on Chris's um, agenda saying perfection. I thought we had slipped; it had slipped through the cracks, and we hadn't done the reading on it. It's, it's in the works here. It's in the works. Yeah. It's definitely in the works. Look at all that paper. Um, yes. Mayor Weil. Um, again, this is two companies that put out to bid. The other one was Chevron, and we went with perfection. I think the total amount they could have, we could, if we did a whole hog energy efficiency for the entire city. Uh, system. I think we we're talking about almost four million. I think we're going to be going under a million for some of the renovations, just to see how it works. Uh, I think that's what we agreed on. It's new. Um, and if you talk about uh, doubling up on this on the next next committee meeting, which would be the 27th, uh, remember I request uh, the planning commission uh, to come and um, basically meet you guys or hang out with you guys as, as Andy gives a uh, presentation, I believe, mm -hmm. on long-term our long-term infrastructure uh, plan. 
here. So it's just to remember when you say putting all these things together, it might start piling up real soon in terms of two weeks from now. We'll just be here till midnight. <laughs> hmm. Okay. We all done? Mm -hmm. We're all done. We're going to call this meeting over at 826. Ain't bad.